Hello and welcome to Creative Vitality Jam Sessions. Here we have intimate conversations with extraordinary dance and theater artists about reimagining creativity and supporting and building community. CVJS and I walk in solidarity and as allies for equality, justice, and respect. Black Lives Matter. Let's keep dancing to bring change. I'm Helen Pickett, and today's guest is Erica Lal. She is a dancer with American Ballet Theater. We have known each other since 2020. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Hi, Helen. How are you? I'm great, Erica. Oh, you look beautiful. Thank you. It's so good to see you. You too. After our intense five week uh, wilderness, living, creating, eating, everything art together. Oh, it's, you know, you create quite a strong bond. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I should actually say where that was. We were in Katzbahn together with, uh, it was the ABT pod and Eric and I worked together in a quintet and it was really an extraordinary time that we had, that we shared. Um, First question I ask um, is, what part of the world are you in? I am currently in New York. New York, great. And yeah? Home, just home. <laughs> home, exactly. It must be nice, right? I mean, I love the city. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It just feels right to be here always. Yeah. I, I was home for so long and during COVID in Houston. And it yeah. just, I don't know, there's just a warmth to the city that I miss. I totally agree. It's yeah. so funny. People that have never lived in New York City cannot really understand when people that have lived there for a certain amount of time uh, explain that it feels like a huge, not a village, but I tell you, it's like a warm hug. People, people that live in New York know New York is strong right. and ever-changing, and it's it's you feel the support, you feel the camaraderie. Right. It's, it's an extraordinary place. I'm so happy you're there. I know we do. <laughs> <laughs> so Erica, I would like to start actually with 2020 leading into this year's projects. Mm -hmm. So you were quite busy. Um, how did 2020, so the pandemic year, that period of time, lay the foundation for this year's activity um, were there unexpected shifts in how uh, you approached your art? Um, perhaps things that you might have learned, taken with you, surprises? Um, how might have you reimagined yourself as an artist? Right. And um, there's a lot of questions, but were there unexpected projects? And lastly, what's next? That's a lot. <laughs> so I I mean, 2020 was crazy for all of us in so many different ways. Um, you know, we were in our touring season. We were actually about to go to Chicago and then all of a sudden found out the Chicago tour was canceled. So, I mean, I jumped on a plane because I was worried that I was going to be stuck in New York for I don't even know how long. Um, but, you know, we thought we we're going to come back and tour again. And then it ended up me being in Houston with my family from March until August. Oh. Yeah, so that was a long time. You know, I moved away from home at 15 by myself. So it was definitely an adjustment moving back into my parents' home. But you know, it's, I'm really grateful that I had this time because, you know, as a professional dancer, we don't have, however, what is that, six months with our families ever. And you know, a lot of us move away from home young and I got to spend time with my family, with my nephew, who was at the time a little over one. And I wouldn't have been able to bond with him like I was able to. And so, you know, I feel like he knows me now, which is, I was always worried about because I wasn't ever home for long amounts of time. So that's something I'm very grateful for, especially that bond with my nephew, because, you know, I can FaceTime him now and he's like, hi, Ari. It's just really cute. Um, but you know, being home was difficult, um, especially when, you know, you just want to be in the studio with your colleagues. That, that again, that warmth you feel in a studio with everyone that you work with, with your friends, that kind of vibe 
kind of helps me to elevate myself when I have others to look up to, when I have others who are giving me advice, you know. And so it was difficult being home and staying in shape for something we didn't even know was going to happen. Like none of us knew if ballet would be a thing, honestly, because we're all out of shape. We're all at home in our little Marley rectangle trying to stay in shape, which is so difficult because you go from rehearsing from 12 to seven to a ballet class and maybe point or variations. So that was difficult. Um, but, you know, I think it also gave me a chance to kind of sit down, relax and become more in touch with myself, which as a dancer, I think it's really easy to just get in the habit of not thinking too hard about things because you don't want to be affected emotionally by it in the studio, of course. From a young age, you're kind of taught to just not say too much, don't react too much and do the work. You know, you that's how you improve, honestly. Um, but I think it's important for us to be in touch with our emotions. And I think that's helped me grow in such beautiful ways because I actually know who I am, <laughs> which was, it's really difficult when you're in a studio all the time and you don't speak, our art form isn't speaking. And you know, you're given the steps you're supposed to do, you're given the character you're supposed to play and that's that. And very rarely are we just talking back and kind of having a conversation because first of all, we don't have time. And second of all, it's not normal in the arts community actually. Um, so that was, I feel like a more well-rounded person. I feel like I know myself and I feel like I can take that into ballet. And it's not just me trying to be someone for the person at the front of the room, for the director. It's me wanting to be my best self, which is so easy to say. And I feel like I've been saying that for years, but not actually doing. Because at the end of the day, you want everyone at the front of the room to be like, wow, she's amazing. Let's cast her in this and that and that. But you need to believe that for yourself and believe that, oh, I could be doing that. I should be doing that. What can I do to be doing that? How can I help myself to do that? So. Huge growing period. Very. And how beneficial to you first as a human being, mm -hmm because that's what you're talking about, right? You're, you're bringing the human into your art, which, uh, well, that I believe is, is the only way. And I do believe that our dance world, our ballet world, because we can't say it's dance because other dance forms are different, but our ballet world, I do believe that we um, are promoting more give and take more conversation. Um, certainly the ballet world that I came from, that is, you know, from 19 on. And as you know, I really believe in that. And I do believe it makes, you know, the person emerge on stage, which is really, that's, that's the magical being yeah. that people in the audience respond to. When they see someone, they understand. And that is communication. That's you, that's you saying, you know, it's, it's, it's courageous, you know, the more that you say, okay, I'm coming on the stage as a human being, it's a courageous step. And I tell you, not everybody makes that step. So I'm so, so, so happy for you. Um, and it will, it will be a great, great and a different journey for you since you've made this beautiful step. I'm really happy for you and at such a young age. So bravo, yeah, beautiful. There are some questions that we need to uh, go over in this paragraph, however. So um, so that, that really laid the foundation, which is beautiful, I love that. Um, you spoke, that was perhaps an unexpected thing in your, that shifted your approach, it's beautiful. Um, were there any unexpected projects that came your way? Oh, yeah. Yes. So strange enough, you, in a time where the world is kind of shut down, um, you know, one of my favorite projects of uh, the Rona period was um, getting to go to collage dance in Memphis, Tennessee, 
and they invited me to be their firebird in the <sighs> production of their firebird. Um, and it was just like, I forever thank Kevin of, um, from Collage Dance for inviting me because I just hadn't been given the opportunity to have a role like that. And I think it really opened my eyes to what I can do because I saw myself in a different light. I saw myself as the principal dancer in the piece and just, you know, getting to really be coached. And um, I love nitpicking and I was, I was happy to finally have that done on me. Um, the people there were incredible. I just, uh, it's such a family environment there. And, you know, we would hang out on the lounge. I did, I just met these people and it felt like I had known them for ages. The dancers were incredible. They were inspiring, they were beautiful. And it was just a magical experience altogether. That's how I would describe it. Um, so that was one of my favorite memories of COVID. And, you know, it was, it premiered virtually. Um, and it was really fun to watch. And they added these really cool special effects. So I, I would do like a hand and it would just spurt off and there was fire on the firebird feather. So just, just really incredible experience. Um, and then probably one of my other favorite ones during this period was um, a little short film with Herschel. Um, Herschel, the like bag company. And, you know, I, I remember my sister gave me a Herschel bag. I think it was four or five years ago. I loved that bag. It was just, it was their simple, black and leather backpack. And I wore it until it broke for like four years. Um, so then to be reconnected with Herschel and to create a, a short film with them, showing them a little behind the scenes of my dance life was beautiful. And we had one day of filming and it was just, everyone in that community was so nice and generous. Um, so that was really fun. And then I did host um, a center stage reunion with ABT. And that was also, cause I love that movie. <laughs> I have watched it so many times. I remember watching it with my sister so many times, my best friend so many times so to then host the reunion. I think it was 20 years later. was just very fun So, And I, I mean, I love kind of hosting. I love speaking. So that was really fun to get to do. I think your center stage was my turning point. I had, that's how I was with the movie turning yeah. point. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, okay, wonderful. So, um, and, and the last one is, what's next? Is there any project coming up? So, oh, I, I need to talk about desire though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so also in the, the Rona period, um, when we were in ABT's, bubble and Cotspawn together. Um, working with you just, again, changed my mindset. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you had a belief in me that I didn't have before. And you wanted to draw things out of me. You wanted me to be seen. You wanted me to dig into myself and kind of put that out on stage. And so being able to work with you for three weeks again, made me a stronger person, a stronger dancer. And I'm very grateful that I was able to perform in that ballet because I, first of all, I love it. The movement, the story, I'm a, I, I think I'm a storyteller and being sure. able to tell that story, you know, we, we put that together so quickly, but I are instantly felt connected to the story. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I don't know, it's just a blessing that we connected during this period again. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same, Erica. I feel the same. And I, I felt that connection immediately that you were someone who really was ready mm -hmm. to say, right, you know? Um, and um, really, you know, said yes. Said yes, 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 kept saying yes. Um, so again, you know, there's a reciprocal thing there. Uh, so people have to say yes together, right? For, for, they don't have to, but it's really nice if that yes is together because a lot, a lot of different kind of work can happen. So um, it's very special to me. And you are a storyteller. You're right. You are. 
you have a lot of stories to tell and um, you connect. Um, there's a dancer in Scottish ballet, Sophie Martin, who's also just, the story is so connected to the movement. She, it's just, she loves to tell that story, mm -hmm. you know, physically and emotionally. And, and um, you remind me of her actually, she's, if you have a chance, she's an amazing dancer. Um, she was actually, she, she, she learned both leads in the crucible, but ended up playing Abigail. Um, yeah, amazing, really. So, okay, tangential, let me get to the next question. <laughs> okay, so this is a, a bit of a long lead in, but Erica, you joined EBT Studio Company in September, 2014 then joined American Ballet Theater as an apprentice in December 2015 and became a member of the Corps de Ballet in May 2016. You were on the cover of Dance Magazine January 2018, in which you were named 25 to Watch. Your repertoire includes Porcelain Princess in Aurora's Wedding, The Canteen Keeper in Ratmansky's The Nutcracker, Red Riding Hood and Ratmansky's The Sleeping Beauty, the little, A Little Swan and The Italian Princess in Swan Lake and featured roles in After Effect, Deuce Coupe and Dream Within a Dream. These were deferred or perhaps just the last one was deferred. I think it, the title is like Dream Within a Dream Deferred. Oh, thank you. I was thinking, oh, pandemic. <laughs> thank you yeah. i should have done my homework a little better um and then in the upper room you also created featured roles in indestructible light and help me with this is it predicari or predicari you know i don't know how to say okay. it <laughs> so, so i gave two options great okay <laughs> um you are quite young and already you have a vast repertoire what excites you when you are when you approach a new role? You kind of dipped in a bit here, but um, and do you have a favorite role you have danced or a role that you aspire to dance? So the first question is, what excites you when you approach a new role? I mean, I always just get excited with new experiences in general, ballet or not. Um, so of course, when I have a new role to dive into, I'm already first excited. And then second, I kind of want to dive into that and learn more about the character I'm going to play, if it is a character role. Um, so that's also what excites me doing new types of movement and being able to show myself in a different light with a different character. Yeah, and so I guess like, is the excitement to actually, yes, dip into a different side of yourself, but also maybe to put that mask on and see how it feels. Mm -hmm. Could that also be part of it? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm seen as a very bubbly, lively, young spirit. So when I'm, if I were to be given a role where I'm not that, I usually, kind of like it a little more because I get to play a role that most people don't see and that I kind of maybe feel behind the scenes, but I'm not usually showing. Right. Yeah, because we all carry all those aspects, right? And plus, I'm sorry, but evil roles are really fun to play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like Carabas looks so fun. Looks so fun. So fun. <laughs> oh. So, okay, beautiful. Um, when we worked together on Desire, besides your gorgeous dancing, here we dipped again, but I wanna go in a little bit more. I found you exquisitely, uh, an exquisitely expressive actress. Um, is acting an avenue you'd like to journey down? Um, I also found you very open to new approaches, yeah? And how would you describe this trust in process within yourself? Um, yeah. Okay, wait, what was the first part? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, okay, so is acting an avenue you'd, you'd like to journey down? Yes, I would absolutely love to journey to the acting side. You know, I in middle school, there was this program called AMS and it was art, music, and speech. So I guess it was 
I think music and speech were half semesters and art. I don't really know how art fit in there. But so speech included theater arts and all of that. So with speech, we learned how to speak and present. You know, we would go to the front of the room. Either we had written a speech or we were reciting um, poetry or prose, something of that. And I think that opened me to the idea of and of acting. I loved speaking. Um, and we would actually have these speech tournaments. And I remember learning this little kid's book. It was called Pinkalicious. And you memorize the entire book and you would have to then act it out. And I think that gave me a good intro to acting because, you know, I had, I was so young, but I had memorized the book and then I had to present it in front of judges and, you know, people would win first, second or third. Um, and, you know, we had a lip sync section, which again, opens you up to different kinds of movement. And, you know, I mean, I was coaching my friends because I was already the dancer, <laughs> but I was choreographing the whole dance. Um, so that was my first sort of intro to theater arts. And I remember we, again, in middle school, we had, I don't really know what class this was, maybe like English, I don't know. But um, we had to reenact a part of a movie. And so we reenacted some of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And like I, I was Veruca Salt. I had borrowed my friend's like fur coat. And I think that was my real intro to playing one specific character. Um, and I loved it. And I feel like I excelled at it at such a young age. Um, and so now I feel I would love to act, whether it be now or later, I am just very interested in that world. Um, I love to play characters daily, like just on a normal day, I love to kind of act differently. You know, it's fun. It's fun to play characters, especially with people, you know. Um, so I think it'll be a journey that I would like to start in or continue in, shall I say. Yeah. And so that's finding acting classes, maybe acting coaches, which is hard with our schedule, but you know, I would, I really am going to make it work because that is a dream for me. Remind me um, afterward, I have uh, a really good acting coach who I studied with and she's, she's doing Zoom classes now, but I studied with her for two years when I first moved to New York. Yeah. I was acting, her name's Penny Templeton. and. She's quite a good coach and she has, she has some very specific and easy techniques that allows you when you practice it to get right into a character. So I'll give you that information when we're done, but Thank yeah. You so That's yeah. Great. <laughs> um, I actually had a, a conversation with her a few weeks back. Yeah. I thought, oh, I want to interview this woman because she's really, really extraordinary. She has a good book as well. I'll tell you those things. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think I missed the second half of that question. Yeah. It, well, again, we've talked a bit about this. So um, how would you describe the trust that you have in, in like processing and in going into process mm -hmm. for roles? Right. I mean, I think because I've been in the company for now, I guess five years now, I trust myself a little more. Of course, when you join a company, it's just kind of like, oh, I'm gonna tiptoe around because I don't really know what's going on. I'm very new to this environment. But now I feel comfortable in my environment. Um, and you know, I feel like you have to trust yourself in these processes or you won't improve, you won't excel, you won't reach that next step unless you trust that you may fail. And with, through, with, I mean, I, I hate the word failure. You may tr trust that you may fall, but then you'll get back up. So, I mean, that's fine. That's normal life. And if you, if you feel like you're falling, you're going to ask for help. I'm going to come and talk to you, things like that. And we'll rise together. That's, I think that's how we improve in all aspects of life. Yeah. Agreed. And I like to say, you know, we only fall as far as, that's how tall we are. Right. And, and dancers are so good at falling. Yes. And getting back up. So it's funny, it's a very simple and but very true analogy for dancers, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So Erica, my goodness, you have modeled 
you have been featured in commercials for major lines of dancewear, uh, hair products, jewelry, accessories, designer fashion like Herschel, uh, and active wear such as Christian Dior, Elle, and Unilever, among others. You were named as the Caribbean American icon by Caribbean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Caribbean, I just, Caribbean, featured on billboards throughout New York. Uh, wow. Um, I always had outside uh, interests as well when I danced. And I think it made me a better dancer, these outside interests. Um, it gave me an insight to art. So how do these outside interests inspire you, um, perhaps give you different insight? Um, and have you found pathways besides the acting that you might want to dig further into? You spoke about maybe hosting. Right. I mean, I feel like, I don't know, it just... First off, I'm grateful to be in New York because, you know, you can do anything here. Honestly, you can be anyone here. And without New York, I wouldn't have been able to have these kinds of opportunities. It's just an opportunity place and I'm grateful to be here. Um, but, you know, doing these different types of passions, different types of jobs, I feel like makes me have a little more confidence actually. You know, when you go on the set, and you're a dancer, people are like, oh my gosh, she's amazing, which you don't often get in ballet because we don't really have time for that. I mean, we, I think we could praise each other a little more, honestly, but um, we don't get that sort of direct praise often. So, you know, if I were to go do a commercial shoot, I have a, a little boost of confidence from that shoot that kind of leads me back into work. And, you know, it's different experiences and Again, if for the hair commercial I did, I learned how to be on set. I learned how to a camera to come like directly into my face. I learned how to grab a hair product, <laughs> like very different things that you can take into arts and in any type of art. Um, yeah, and you, I mean, I, even when you're on set, you're speaking to all these different types of people in the industry. And that opens your eyes to, oh, maybe I could do this. Maybe what they're saying can be taken into ballet. Um, so yeah, again, I think we all kind of feed off of each other and learn and grow from each other. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Agreed. Um, oh, and then Pat, you said passion projects or something. So, well, yeah, have you, so have these, have these very, cause you've done quite a few, you've gone down really wonderful varied pathways. And is there, like the acting, is there perhaps another avenue that you think you might wanna dig into? Um, I mean, I love the entire commercial industry. So any of that, whether it's commercials or, I would love to do voiceover work actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, acting, of course, I would be into Broadway. I just need some singing lessons, but I'm already very, a very loud person. So I think I could, I did singing lessons when I was 12. So I think it's somewhere down in there. Yeah, <laughs> it probably is. Yeah, it's in there. I just need some help on where to go. Um, and then, I mean, I've loved teaching. Um, and, you know, I've, from the time I was probably 10, I always said I, I dreamed of opening a ballet studio in Jamaica. My mom's from Jamaica. And that's always been something that's stuck with me. And actually I just taught in Kingston, Jamaica. And it was just, I had never been to Jamaica by myself. And huh. this was the first time I went by myself and really, you know, I feel I was with, I was with the people there. They were driving me around, taking me to these places, bringing me to this jerk spot, all of this. And I felt a, a totally different connection to Jamaica. I've always felt so much love for Jamaica, but now I was just like, I don't want to leave. And it wasn't, I don't want to leave because I love the beach or I love the food. It was, I don't want to leave because the people just really brought me in. And there's just such a warmth in Jamaica that I can't describe besides the heat, the people are just beyond. And I feel very inspired when I go there and you know, I was able to see family that I hadn't seen in a long time. And 
the students and the professionals were just so willing to take anything that I was spewing out. And you could just tell that they loved the arts. And, you know, that's something I want to bring more to Jamaica. You know, it's a tiny little island and I want to bring more ballet to them. Um, so that's always been a dream of mine to open a studio there. So we'll see, we'll see. Many options, many ideas, but I definitely am going to end up living in Jamaica one point in my life. Well, I was just gonna say, you know, you have a lot of life ahead of you. So that's definitely probably something for the future after a career in ballet, certainly, and maybe alongside or adjacent another career that you're that you're embarking on. But actually, you know, you mentioned your teacher, uh, your teaching, and you are an American Ballet Theater Certified National Training Curriculum Instructor. You, you've also done that in your in your youth, um, and you've, and I suppose you were teaching uh, master classes, right, down in Jamaica. Yeah. And it was, yeah. it was completely free to everyone there, which mm -hmm. I think, I think needs to happen more often because then we have more people coming to these classes. Otherwise, it's just like, why have master classes when people can't come? <laughs> Well, it's inclusionary. You're exactly right. We're including, and therefore, uh, it's ex more exposure. You get a little kid that says, oh my God, I love this. Right. How can I find a way to do it? And if without the exposure, that little, you know, I, I often say, how many, you know, Marie Curie, Einstein, these, how many have we missed by not giving opportunity? Right, so it's it's amazing. Um, so you also mentor young dancers as well, um, and especially minority students and those from different disadvantaged communities. Um, and I know teaching calls you. Um, can you explain a bit of your mentorship? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important for younger students coming up to see themselves whether it's on stage or in the studio or being choreographed on, you know what I mean? So I think it's important that I am there for them, not just kind of someone that's far away and they're like, oh, I want to do that, but can I? I think it's important for me to go and have a conversation with these students because, I mean, I didn't grow up with very much of that at all. And I remember when I was 13, no, 14, I can't, young. And um, I was doing the ABT summer intensive in Orange County, California. And my aunt was there and she said, hey, Erica, like, would you wanna go meet Misty? She's having this talk in town. And I was, I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I can leave my summer program. I, we're also supposed to go to, I don't even know, somewhere during the day. I don't know if they'll allow me to leave and they ended up releasing me and that was the first time I met Misty and so just to kind of have that first initial meeting I was like wow like she's there and that was that and then when I went to the school the very next year they invited me after the summer program the first day of class she walked by the window she well she walked by the door and then she backed up and she was like <laughs> <laughs> and afterwards she called me out and I was just shocked that she remembered me. She was saying, I didn't know you're going to be here. I'm like, I didn't know either. This is very last minute because my parents, again, were worried about me leaving home so soon. So it's, again, that was my first time seeing someone at the time succeeding like me, that looked like me. Yeah. So I think it's, it's really important for me to have these conversations with them letting them know they can do it. And again, with ballet, you don't always get that, um, you don't always get the encouragement that you need or should be getting. So I think it's important that I really talk to them and say, hey, it's possible you need to put in the hard work, you can do it. The end, you, you can do it, that's really it. And you need to make sure you have a really good support team, whether it be your teachers, whether it be your mom and dad, whether it be your best friend, someone that can help encourage you when you're feeling down. And I'm, I'm forever grateful that I had my parents and my sister 
because otherwise I would have quit long time ago because of, you know, just not feeling like you belong, not feeling like you're going to succeed, being told you're not going to succeed over and over again. Wow. Yeah. How important is that moment of Misty stopping in the doorway? I know. <laughs> How beautiful, but how beautiful and how she knew, she knew what this would, you know, to say she, she stopped for you. And it's just beautiful. It's a connection that you'll never forget, obviously. And um, I, I agree. I agree as, as, um, as a mentor for, for younger women, you know, that you can, as a woman, you can achieve anything you want to achieve. And I'm here to say yes to you. That's what I say, you know, give the yes. Yeah, beautiful. So, so along those lines, um, before the last three questions I ask everybody, how do you see ballet evolving? How would you like it to evolve? I really hope that ballet is more inclusive. Um, I hope that every type of person is visible. I hope that there isn't just, you know, like six black people. I hope we have a diverse amount of people and I hope we have all types of cultures. I hope that it's just, it's a melting pot of humans and bodies and everyone. And I really, I hope that happens soon. And I think we're on the right track. I think we're having thank goodness for COVID actually, because you know we had these conversations that we wouldn't have had time for. And you know, we had two hour long Zoom meetings, three hour long Zoom meetings of these conversations we hadn't had ever. So I think we all know what needs to be done. We all know where we want to be. It's just a matter of doing it. <laughs> but that's it. So I hope that I don't know, in the next 20 years, we see more of the world on the stage. We see more of the world in the studios. And, you know, it really does start from a little four-year-old. And I think we can do it. I really do. <laughs> well, that's it. I was, that's what was going through my mind. I mean, first of all, I hope it's the next 10 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope, I hope it's, uh, I would like well, let's say the building. I would like the building that it's that it's always there, that it's that it's a constant now. And and you said all people represented. Well, because we can, because that is this country. I mean, hello, it is this country. We could have everybody represented, but it does it does involve including. Mm -hmm. It doesn't include. It does involve access. So important access and then the mentoring and then the, yeah, absolutely. So this kind of goes, thank you. And it kind of goes to this question and supporting and building a more equitable dance community. What are some specific daily practices? So getting a little bit more specific, like the daily stuff. I mean, again, I still really think we need to daily have this idea in our mind that everyone needs to be represented. That's really it. We need to see that. We need to be able to foreshadow that. <laughs> so it actually happens. And I, I think it's, I think it's gonna be very easy. Mm, let me cut that. <laughs> let me chop that. I think it's just a simple mind change and the mind openness. Um, to including everyone, to including all types of genders, to including all types of stories. Um, you know, we can have a story ballet that isn't usual, that isn't Swan Lake. We can have a story ballet on real life. We can have a, a, a three length, a three act ballet on a, a human story in 2021. And I think it's important that we actually make that happen or we start the ideas. We start that, that little motor going on how we can actually make this happen. Um, so again, just being open-minded, I think is going to change the ballet forever. Agreed. Agreed, Erica. Yeah. 
So can you share, and this is kind of a spontaneous situation because I know you have many, many moments and you've already shared so much. Can you share a favorite or impactful memory from your creative life? I mean, I feel like the teaching in Jamaica was probably one of my favorite memories so far. Um, this is hard, I don't know. Well, you've already, you've already mentioned, I mean, we started the, the, our, our conversation that way. Yeah. So it can be one, you know, and that was a special, and that was just very, very present. It's very present in you. So sometimes it is that, it's that presentness, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and then what about some insights in living a creative life? What it takes? Right. I do think you have to be okay with sort of not living that normal teenage life shall I say you know I decided when I was 12 13 that this was what I was going to be doing for the rest of my life you know we decide as artists that we're not going to go the daily I mean the normal route of going to high school having prom and homecoming going to dances you know it's 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 a little isolating honestly but that's because we have a passion for this art and it requires you to put your all into it and you have to be responsible being a creative person you know we are so busy but it requires a different kind of responsibility of you know i have my arts i have what i'm doing in the art world and I also have the business world and meshing that together can sometimes be very overwhelming. <laughs> but once you finally have that down, you have that process, but it is, it's a very difficult career, but you have to give it your 100% or you won't succeed. That's what, that's all I would have to say. Yeah, totally agree. <laughs> totally agree. Oh, yeah, you're all your friends in high school, it's, it's, or even friends growing up, you may end up separating and coming back to each other just because you've lived a completely different life than the normal student who was going through college and high school. You're already working at 17. I started working at 17. And I feel like I did lose some friendships because I was just in a completely different, I was in a different state, first of all. I was in a different mindset of, you know, this is my passion. I have to give it my all. I have to put in all of these hours and go home and do homework until 3 a.m. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think some feelings for me were brought up again, watching the Olympics, mm -hmm. just remembering, you know, the, like you said, the, the rigorous life that we lived so young. Yes. So young. But it, I tell you, it sets you up for the rest of your life. Right. You know how to work. Yes. I know yeah. how to work. I know how to manage my time. Yes. Which I, I had to learn so young because I moved here at 15. Like I, I had to learn how to cook my meals, how to organize, how to clean, how to schedule when I'm going to answer my emails. That was the hardest thing for me, answering emails. <laughs> Still is very difficult. <laughs> But actually answering emails on time was something that I really had to work on because you're not, you don't do that until you're usually out of college. So then doing that at 15. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's a skill set and you have it now, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I actually, I'm pretty thankful for the rigor I had to go through as a young person because like we've been talking about, it really is a setup for the rest of your life. It really, it, it's, it, pardon the bad pun, but we really do have a leg up, you know? I mean, exactly, way, way, way up. <laughs> I'm, I'm forever grateful for going through that a little earlier than the, than the normal person. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready to take on my entire adult life, have a family, like start a business, like all of this. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I believe that all of that will happen for you. Uh, you're an extraordinary 
woman. Um, it has been a pleasure to get to know you and work with you um, at this point in your career as well. And I'm sure we'll be seeing each other again at some point. You have a long career ahead of you. That is my hope. And I have to tell you, it's just, um, it's just been such a delight to sit here and speak with you this Sunday morning, Erica. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so, so great to see you again. I was like, it's been too long since God's gone for us to reconnect. I know. I know. Well, you know, we do in different ways, right? But this kind of, you know, having a coffee together in our respective, you know, New York cafes. So uh -huh. <laughs> but I do want to direct people to find out something more about you. So where, where could they find out about you? Um, I have my website ericalal.com okay. Instagram of course erica underscore lol on every single social media great um, that's pretty much it yeah great great and so also um below this conversation when you watch it you will see a short bio of erica so there is that in the description page um and i'm going to announce our next conversation it will be with jeff beal he's an award-winning uh composer for film opera and dance and now it's time for thanks gracie spina thank you so much superwoman um you make this happen every for 82 sessions now so thank you thank you dance world for always uplifting uh being there when everything else wasn't always there safety net i love you dance world erica i can't wait to see you again i can't wait to hear about what you're doing um can't wait to watch you in your journey thank you so much thank you helen Mwah. bye bye